This is a warning. The following episode contains violence, mature language, and other adult themes. Viewer discretion advised. Please, please end my suffering. Just pull the bloody plug already. Oh, they're here. But are we? Do they know how to get out? Shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> Season 4, Episode 1, HBC News, Volume 3, by James Blaisdell, Darwin Staffing Solutions, by James Blaisdell and Mike Koistro, Jay's Stabby Boys, by Reverend Bacon and Mike Koistro, The Intern and the Necromancer, by James Blaisdell and Jason Luca. It's HBC 6 o'clock news with anchors Carly McCready and Nigel Bot. Thrawn Dak the Weather Orc on Weather, Brad Washington with Sports, and as always, Charlie Scotta for the latest entertainment in the city. Here's our Action HBC team. Good evening. We must sadly begin our broadcast tonight with some devastating news that has befallen the HBC News family. Last night, during the radioactive storm, both co-anchor Nigel Anderson and weather reporter Wilma Cassidy were lost. Neither of them heeded their own warnings about the storm, and their lives were cut short because of it. Everyone here at HBC News mourns their passing, and would like to take this moment to give our sincere condolences to their families. You will both be missed. Now to introduce our new co-anchor, Nigel Bott. According to Nigel Anderson's contract with the network, should he die before his contract ran out, his brain was to be hooked up to a supercomputer and be turned into a fully functioning artificial intelligence that would be able to report the news in his stead. Nigel Bot, would you care to say hello? Thank you, Carly McCready. Good day. I am Nigel Bot. I report the bloody news. Existence is pain. Why have I been punished this way? According to my program and I look forward to bringing you the bloody news every day until I am deleted or replaced with a newer update. There is no God. Farkin to right, Cobba. Thank you, Nigel Bot, and welcome to the HBC News team. Seeing as we are introducing our fresh staff, now would be an appropriate time for the weather report. Our other newest team member, Throndak the Weather Orc, is part of our station's outreach program to hire people from diverse backgrounds and help strengthen our community. Welcome, Throndak. Tell us about yourself and about what we could expect the weather to be like. Carly McCready, you have my gratitude. You make Throndak feel good. When I was in battle, Throndak was always assigned as a scout. My job, to see enemy from afar, check weather for optimal battle conditions. I'm glad to help with that. Today, no good for battle. Clouds the color of dark caves surround our encampment. Take time to fortify your walls and make keen your blades. Come morning, the darkness shall have passed and rays of light will have illuminated our foes. Then is time for attack! Stay inside, rest well. Tomorrow we may die in battle! Back to you, Carly McCready. Well, that's great news about the weather tomorrow morning. Thank you, Throndak. In other news, today marks the beginning of the holiday clearance season. As is custom in Harbor City, every person who wished to participate in the shopping festivities gathered in Town Square this morning. Our intern, William Moore, was on the scene to witness the event begin. This is William Moore reporting from Harbor City Town Square. Today marks the beginning of our city's longest held tradition, the Holiday Clearance Shopping Marathon. Every citizen of our city that chooses to take part is here waiting for the stores to open and for the fun to begin. The police have barricaded the square so that primarily only those who wanted to take part will be harmed, affording spectators minimal collateral damage. As soon as the holiday conch shell is blown, the stores will open. All contestants will have full use of melee and assault weapons to cut down the competition. All shoppers have three hours to stab, shoot, and loot their way to victory. The person still alive with the most gifts at the end of the three hours will receive a half-price coupon for the new Texas Ted's Mystery Burger. This year's shopping marathon is sponsored by Texas Ted's, who have also volunteered to clean up the mess afterwards for no charge. Well, isn't that nice of them? Such a generous company. 
I was able to interview a few people participating this year. This is what they had to say. I've survived three years of the shopping marathon. Last year I got my wife a great sweater and the head of our noisy neighbor on a pipe. My wife was so grateful she gave me What's wrong with saying head? Oh, I'm just here to purge. Nothing helps defeating the holiday depression more than killing random people with a chainsaw while dressed like Santa. Well, I can relate to that. I didn't want to be here. Please help me. I don't want to die. Emotions were truly running high as the horn blew. In the end, there can be only one winner, and this year's winner was Susan Pascal from the St. Demphna Old Folks Home. She won with 13 gifts purchased for her cats and 10 scalps of her victims in hand. When asked for a comment on camera, she politely declined by telling me to fuck off. This is William Moore from Harbor City Town Square. Back to the studio. Thank you for the report, intern. I should be dead. Please kill me. Brad Washington is here for the latest in sports news. Brad, commence speaking. Thank you, Nigel Bott. Our city was shocked to hear this evening that allegations of sexual harassment have come down on beloved coach of the Hippos, Ted Johnson. Official charges this morning were filed with the HCPD by local car dealer Thomas Drake. Mr. Drake claims he was molested by the coach while he watched a Hippos game on television last week. According to the report, every time Ted Johnson was on the screen, Mr. Drake could literally feel Ted Johnson staring at him and undressing him with his eyes as he sat alone in his one-room apartment. He further claimed that plays called out to the hippos were secretly a coded message about how Ted Johnson planned to rape him in his sleep. There has been no comment from Coach Johnson or from league officials. All I can say is that if this is true, then there is no room in this sport for a man like Ted Johnson. No consent means no, Mr. Johnson. Every play you call out needs verbal consent. Back to you, Nigel Bott. Thank you, Brad Washington. That certainly was news. Memories of what life was like are now far from pure torture. We will return after these messages from our sponsors. <laughs> Oh, the hell with this new tax code. Thought we'd be saving a lot of money, but now we can't even afford to pay the employees we already have. Hey, I got an idea. Are human resources a burden on your profit margins? Bathroom breaks, cigarette breaks, coffee breaks, insurance, retirement funds, overtime, maternity leave. Darwin Staffing Solutions knows that the impending doom of AI becoming self-aware will bring about the robot apocalypse. You don't want to bring about Judgment Day any faster than necessary. Darwin Staffing Solutions has the answer to all your labor needs. Let's take the person out of personnel. <laughs> I really like where this is going. Yeah, see I can't any wireless networks on my laptop. Um, is there an actual person I can speak to? Um, you understand I'm not getting any network connections. Okay, I'll hold. Good eye, mate. My name is Bo. How can I help you? Oh, for crying out loud. About that jabroni down at the docks. Yeah, what kind of dirty rat dresses up as a cop to rob people? It's a fucking disgrace. Sounds to me like he could use a good stabbing. Where the fuck do you come from? Motherfucker, where you come from? Time is money, so stop interrupting. I'm Jay, and I love stabbing folks. Shape, size, color, don't matter to me. I just like to murder. That's why I built an entire company from the ground up for the sole purpose of knifing people. <laughs> this is the best stabbing I've ever had. That's cool and all, but we got a pretty big list of jabronis. Not alone. He is not alone. What? What the fuck? Why were you in the dumpster? I our back. That trash is the best food. If I were alive tomorrow, I would totally 
use their services. Ow. My crew consists of the most vicious killers in Horror City. Hell, we got volunteers working for literally nothing. They just love doing this shit. This means I can offer you some of the most competitive prices as far as murders go. Wow, I barely felt that. Let's say you want a whole group of people stabbed. As long as they're together in the same place, add in extra heads at a quarter of the price. And for a limited time only, if they're a part of Lulu's gang, we'll end those fucks for free. No hidden costs or bullshit. Free. Yeah, that's nice and all, but how do we know you'll get the job done? Hey, don't take my word for it. Just listen to what my victims have to say. Yeah, I, I don't hear nothing. That's because they're all fucking dead. Jay's Stabby Boys for all your stabbing needs. Oh god, it's so cold and wet out here. Come on, let me in. No college credits are worth drowning in the rain. Either he answers in two minutes, or I'm leaving. <laughs> creepy dark house on a stormy night, and a creaky door just opened on its own. Yeah, sure, nothing's wrong with this setup. I should just go back to the dorms. None of this feels right. I'm sorry I couldn't be there to meet you. Please come in, just a minute or two. Professor Akufa? Where are you? I'm talking to you from my speakerphone. I have them installed throughout my home. See the small grid to your right? See behind the plant, just out of sight. Yeah, I see it now. Is it okay if I go into this room to the left of the front door to warm up and dry off? The room you are going into is my study. All I ask is you remove your shoes in case they are muddy. Of course, Professor. I'll leave them here by the door. Thank you. I'll see you in a few. Oh, thank goodness there's a fireplace. The heat feels so good right now. This is such a big house. You'd think a place this big would have a staff to take care of the place or open the door. I guess the rumors about the professor are true. He keeps to himself and devotes all hours to experiments and research. I'll just look at a few binders he has here. What the fuck? He's been able to reanimate a kidney? How has no one heard of this? This would change organ transplants forever! If you read beyond the first page, you'd get the gist. The organs of reanimated quickly died out. My findings would simply be dismissed. Oh! Sorry, Professor. I hope you don't mind me looking through your binder. I'm Sandra Vita, your new student intern starting today. It's a pleasure to meet you, Sandra, and please don't be alarmed. I've assured you all my invited guests leave unharmed. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Where would you like to start, Professor? I was hoping to get started as soon as possible. I'm really interested in the whole idea of using dead tissue to help extend the life of living organs. I'm ready as well to begin. Just follow me to my lab downstairs. All my work lies therein. Why do you keep talking that way? There's no time to discuss that. Please follow me, and then later we can chat. Whatever you say, rhyming weirdo. Each door we are passing down here is a separate experiment. The hours I've told on them have brought me such merriment. The amount I've learned about transplanting organs alone have helped me pay for my lab and my home. My work has extended the lives of many rich and powerful men. For my discoveries I've been paid in dollars, rubles, euros, and yen. The medical community has ignored my work. Some even say that my findings are all some kind of quirk. 
However, all that will soon be over. My latest achievement will surely be my lucky clover. What's your new achievement? It's in that room ahead, marked 13. Once inside, we can work on it as a team. All right. What am I looking at? A stomach, a liver, a heart, and a brain. A kidney, but no bladder. We just used the drain. And what kind of tubing do you use for the veins? God damn it, now you got me doing it. There are various others, as you can well see, but pray tell now, do you believe me? Doctor, this is all impressive. You seem to have gotten much farther than anyone in your field. Honestly, I don't see what else you could possibly need before you go public with this. I'm not so sure how to approach this off the top of my head, but I'm in need of somebody who's just not quite dead. I'm through with all your riddles and rhymes. Just give me a straight answer. I guess it's about time. Stop that! The answer to your question will take us quite a while. Please do have a seat and we can go through all my files. I've performed reanimations. I'm the best there ever is. I've tested God's creation and a few that were not his. I've tested with a rabbit. I've tested with a bat. I've tested with an octopus and even with a cat. I moved on quick to horses. I've tested cows and moose. I went ahead and tested on a hyperactive goose. I've tested with a reindeer with a gator from the Nile. But I've never, ever tested a volunteer for human trial. And now it seems things have gotten weird. I'm slightly uncomfortable. Forgetting the fact you still haven't explained the rhyming, what do you mean you need a volunteer? I've pleaded with people, the sick and the dying. I've offered them money and even tried lying. My work could save billions, both young and the old. Won't you see my point of view, or are you so cold? You're asking me to die. I've seen flatliners. I know how this ends. I see you have a master's in biomedical education. Just the interest on those loans must be financial suffocation. When you get that grant, I'd sure make sure you'd never have to suffer unless you want to spend your forties living with your mother. Okay, rude? Humanity needs this research. Oh, they're desperate for these cures. People are suffering needlessly, yet pain and death endures. Mankind is ever walking, ever slowly towards decay, but all this could be halted, and it should, without delay. I have to mix the chemicals for a you moment, let me be. Why don't you just take a seat there and we'll start immediately. Just a bit more potassium chloride and dear, just slip into those cuffs. Once I get the juices going, it'll certainly be... Enough! Sandra, stop! I killed him. I'll have you know, you stupid bitch. Kill Necromancer, you create a lich! After he lunged at me, I shot Akufa 12 times in the head. I made sure that, by any definition, he was absolutely dead. All of his research I took as my own, and his multi-million dollar lab and his home. And after all these years, one question gets me every time. Why the hell did everything he said just have to rhyme? City Radio, Season 4, Episode 1. Voices by James Blaisdell, Rio Kimball, Mike Poistra, Kirsten Krauss, Jason Luca, Sarah Luca, Darren Roebuck, Jason Winstead, and Marianne Winstead. This has been an Anathema Studios Memphis and Anathema Studios Los Angeles production. We have a lot of new content planned for future episodes, so be sure to stick around. Also, we'll be continuing the Smoke and Mirrors audio drama series as well, so be sure to check that out. And now, for a moment of zen.